Hello Diesel Seekers, welcome back. I am Pani. Today we are going to start our journey in the graph database space. We are going to see the origins of graph database and what are the different types of graph databases we have. How do you query? How do you plan? How do you model your graph database? How do you scale your graph database in this series of videos? Let us start with the origin of graph databases. So first of all, what is a database? So let us start with a simplistic requirement and slowly progress towards a requirement wherein we need graph databases. At the very beginning when uh, computers used to fill a big room, the requirement was only to store the data and retrieve it. So it was pretty much served by punch cards and later on tape readers and writers. But this didn't uh, last long. So the requirement quickly got changed. So now people wanted to have storing and retrieving related information reliably and efficiently. Related information primarily because uh, the moment you see the use case shopping cart experience or an e-commerce experience, a customer places an order for a set of products. So you have orders, you have products, you have customers. These three are interlinked. So that means the data is related. Reliably and efficiently primarily because when a customer placed an order, it better be delivered than losing it in the thin air. So you want reliability. Finally, efficiency, because we have to serve our customers at the quickest time possible. This problem definition was addressed by relational databases, wherein you maintain their timetables, link them using foreign keys and index the data and retrieve it for reliability and efficiency. In the relational database world, there are many databases out there. Oracle, IBM DB2, Postgres SQL, MySQL, Microsoft Access, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, to name a few, or there are even more in the relational database space. So these relational databases have brought in a promise, ACID. ACID means atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. So very soon, applications started growing in size, and there is a lot of adoption with respect to relational database. This is when the need was further enhanced and we wanted to bring operations close to the data. That is when object-oriented databases was conceptualized. These object-oriented databases can broadly be classified into three categories. Pure object-oriented databases, object relational mappings, and object-oriented SQL. Pure object-oriented databases are the databases where data is written and retrieved in the form of objects. Whereas object relational mappings is just a layer on top of your database which converts application requirements into SQL queries and SQL responses into objects. So that is object relational mappings. Object oriented SQL is writing classes and objects right in your SQL blocks. Pure object oriented databases and object oriented SQL are not very well famous in the uh, developer community. And most of the people have adopted uh, object relational mappings. When it comes to object relational mappings, there are many, many technologies available. Hibernate, OJB, JDO, JPA, and uh, Microsoft.NET link you to SQL. So object relational mappings are very famous with respect to the application development. And very soon, these warrants have gained a lot of traction in the application development space and applications started growing global. That means uh, when you launch a campaign in an e-commerce application, then people across the globe started hitting the websites. This resulted in requirements for huge throughput on transactions and high query volumes. So that is the reason why there was a new need that spun up, which is storing and retrieving information at scale, say exabytes and petabytes. So this we call it as age of cloud or information explosion. To address this new demand of throughput on the database side, no SQL databases have been conceptualized. SQL is a structured query language used for querying all the relational databases. So now we are talking about not only SQL, so there are different ways that you can actually query the data. No SQL databases came with a promise to solve horizontal scalability. That means when you need more, then you can actually scale your databases horizontally so that you can actually have more throughput on your application side. These no SQL databases can be further classified into three categories, key value stores, document databases, and distributed databases. Key value stores is a place where you actually conceptualize or model your data instead of tables into column stores. And document databases is the place where you actually store the data in JSON documents or XML documents. And when you go to distributed databases, your data is distributed across multiple machines than having it in single master node. So these databases are solving high throughput transactions, but conceptualizing and visualizing the data as a single entity lies with the application. 
these no sql databases are not able to live with the promise given by the relational database which is atomicity consistency isolation and durability so not being able to support acid properties is becoming a big problem for these no sql databases so this is when uh, the problem definition started uh, getting redefined so now we actually wanted to store and retrieve related information reliably and efficiently at scale say petabytes and exabytes so now what we are saying is we are actually mixing the requirement of scale versus relational data so to address this problem we have to enter graph databases so neo4j was the pioneer when it comes to the graph databases they started in around 2007 and they uh, launched their first version of neo4j 1.0 in 2010 and since then uh, neo4j has been ruling uh, the entire graph space meanwhile there are many other graph databases which have spun up graph databases again are of uh, two types rdf stores and property graph databases rdf stores uh, and property graph databases we go deep into these topics in uh, our next video uh, wherein we will talk about basics of graph database the problem at hand to store and retrieve related information reliably and quickly at scale say petabytes and exabytes is very well addressed by property graph database to read and write information into these property graph databases there are proprietary languages like cipher from neo4j and also a graph standard across all these graphs which is gremlin so gremlin is a graph standardization brought in by tinkerpop so we will see in detail later on the gremlin query language and how you use it for persisting or retrieving information out of property graph databases we will see in a separate session these graph databases have introduced aecid to the NoSQL world atomicity eventual consistency isolation and durability eventual consistency is over a period of some time the data is going to become consistent this is a promise given by the database that the data will be consistent i've been using graph databases for past six years i have worked on neo4j titan data stacks enterprise graph and janus graph oh this is actually a misplacement this slide is supposed to be coming in the modeling of graph databases so we will discuss that in detail during that session which is going to come up next thank you for staying with me so far in this session we have understood what is the origin of graph database and what is the problem it is set out to solve next we are going to uh, go through the graph database basics what are rdf stores what are property graph databases what is the difference between them and suitability of the graph database based upon the situation or the use case next is gremlin the graph query language which is used for property graph mutations as well as graph traversals the retrieval of the data next we are going to discuss about modeling property graph databases and then we will talk about indexing for better performance next one up is thinking in graph versus thinking in relational world how do you relate relational world with respect to the graph world is what we are going to discuss in that particular session and then we are going to talk about how do you plan your cluster how do you plan your growth of your application with respect to your graph database is what we are going to discuss towards the end of the sessions so these are our upcoming sessions in the graph series so stay tuned to learn more about graph databases and please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for all our future videos in this series Thank you very much. Have a nice time. Fun time learning graph databases. Thank you. Bye-bye.